We're going to cover everything you know for AP Statistics Unit 4, which is going to cover topics on probability and also random variables. I mean, do you see this? There's a lot of content, so let's just get right into it. So what is probability? Well, it's the chance that something happens, and it's written as 0 to 1. So if it's 0, it's impossible. 1 means 100% chance of happening. It's unpredictable in the short term and predictable in the long term because you have to observe many, many trials of the same proportion of the random chance process before it actually starts to approach its actual probability value. So let's say my chance of making a free throw is 50%, right? So if I shot 10 shots, I mean, it's likely that I only make five, but I might make four or I might make six. But if I shot a thousand free throws, it's much more likely because of the many, many more trials that I actually have a proportion equal to 0.5. So for simulation, it is just a model used to mimic real-world events to estimate probabilities. You can use a four-step process to conduct a simulation. You're going to define the problem with the question. Then you're going to describe how to use a chance process like random numbers to model the situation. And then you're going to actually perform that. And then based on your results, you're going to estimate the probability. Now we're going to talk about probability rules. To talk about probability rules, we first need to get a couple definitions out of the way. The first one is mutually exclusive, okay? Uh, two events have no overlap and cannot occur at the same time is the definition for a mutually exclusive uh, occurrence. So you can see here, this is a nice diagram of event A and event B, right? They're mutually exclusive because there's no overlap, right? They cannot occur at the same time. But if they're not mutually exclusive, they can occur at the same time. That's why there's the overlap in the Venn diagram. The next one is independence. So two events are independent if the outcome of one does not affect the outcome of the other. So for example, if I flip a coin and I roll a die, the result of one does not change the result of other. If I flip a coin, right, whatever I get, head, tails, whatever, me rolling a die, because I flipped a head or because I flipped a tails, that doesn't change what I'm gonna get or the probability of what I'm gonna get on the die. All right, so probability rules. So let's say I have two possible events and their probability of occurring is probability of event A and probability of event B. How would I find the probability of either one occurring? So it doesn't matter if it's probability of A happening or probability of B happening. If these two events were not mutually exclusive or if both of these events could happen at the same time, I would add the probabilities and then subtract the overlap. If they were mutually exclusive or they cannot happen at the same time, I would simply add their probabilities. And these equations are on the reference sheet um, the top one is, not the mutually exclusive one. So make sure, just, just make sure you remember that. Um, so now, what if I want to find the probability of both event A and B occurring at the same time? Well, if they were not independent, you would just multiply the probability of A with the probability of B given A. If they were independent, you would simply multiply them. And these equations are also given on the reference table. But... Now let's talk about uh, the complement rule. Okay, so that's cool and all, but what is the probability that A does not occur? Well, the probability of A not occurring is just one minus the probability of A. That's given as a complement rule on your reference table as well. Actually, I'm not sure if this one's on your reference table, so, or reference sheet, so make sure you check that one. Um, but we're gonna move on to visualizing probability in three ways. Um, so there's the Venn diagram, which obviously shows the chance of something happening, event A and event B, and then their overlap. And you have a two-way table. You've probably seen this back in unit one, just displaying the data. And then you also have a probability tree. Um, the thing with this is I, ha I do have an example for this, but I would say that visualizing the data is really coming down to just personal interpretation. So if you are a little confused, pause the video here. I do run through an example here as I scroll down that sort of explains how to interpret the data. But if you are comfortable with the two-way table and the Venn diagrams and understand how we're getting these probabilities, uh, if you're trying to brute force it, it's very difficult and it's very hard to visualize. But I'm telling you, just tie it back to the probability rules, okay? Like my entire explanation over here is just using probability rules and then I'm tying that back into what I see on the Venn diagram, the two-way table, and then if you want an easier visual, look at the probability tree as well. So let's move on to the random variables. So we have four types, discrete, continuous, binomial, and geometric. Okay, so your discrete random variable is a random variable that takes on a specific countable values. 
So think of like the number of heads that you flip in three, um, the number of cars sold by a dealer in a day. So it's like quantitative numbers. Um, now, when you have a continuous random variable, that means it's any value within a range or interval, right? So it's not just one, two, three. You actually count what's in between one and two, right? It's continuous. It's everything in between as well. So think about the height of students in a class, right? So if you think about heights, it's not just you can be one inch or two inches. Obviously, that's super short, but you can be everything in between, right? Also, the time it takes to finish a race, right? It's incremental. It's not just finishing a race in one second or two seconds. It's also you can be like 1.1111. You get the point, right? And here is another diagram just to show the difference between discrete and continuous variables. All right, so if you want to find the mean and standard deviation of discrete or continuous variables, you can also use one variable statistics on your calculator. And a common calculation you will probably have to show for discrete random variable is calculating the mean or expected value slash weighted average. It is the average value over many, many repetitions of the same chance process for this discrete random variable. Here's an example. You can see X just basically just describes the uh, value of that discrete random variable. And then P of X is just the probability of each of those variables. Um, and so what you would do is quite literally just multiply across one times 0 0.1, two times 0 0.3, all the way to the end. And then whatever you get, you add everything. And that is your mean weighted average expected value. So now obviously we have to talk about can't be stats without talking about how you transform probability distributions. Uh, so here's a summary. If you add or subtract the same constant C to each data set, the shape unchanged center increases or decreases by C variability. Uh, remains unchanged. If you multiply or divide by the same constant C to each value in the data set, your shape stays the same. Center, multiply or divide by C, and variability, multiply or divide by C. All right, so here are a couple more equations you need to know when you are adding or subtracting sets of data for random variables, assuming that event A and X are independent events. So you see we have the equation for uh, finding the mean and median of x plus y and x minus y respectively. So make sure you have these equations down. All right, so now we're gonna move on to binomial random variables, and I'm gonna tell you this is all you need, okay? You need to know the acronym BINs, okay? First off, is it binary? Does it you know, satisfy the binary? There has to be a success and there has to be a failure. Uh, is, are the trials independent? Is there a fixed number of trials? And is there a set probability of success for each trial? Um, so make sure for questions, you address each part of BINs, B-I-N-S, explicitly and show that the events satisfy the binomial settings to prove that it's actually a binomial uh, random variable. Uh, for the mean and standard deviation, these are on your reference sheet. Uh, we have the mean and the median. Not the median. The standard deviation uh, where N equals the number of trials and P equals the probability of success. And I would say you can always abuse the calculator for these problems as well. Uh, if you're asked about uh, binomial random variables. Um, so here are the calculator commands. You got binomial PDF, that's just NPX. So N is number of trials, P is probability of success, X is the number of successes, and it calculates the probability of exactly K number of successes in N trials. Um, honestly, it should be X number of trials. I'm gonna just change that. Oops. X number of trials, okay, binomial CDF, NP lower and upper bound. It's like the same thing, except it's the cumulative probability of having K or fewer or more successes in N number of trials. It really depends on the parameters that you put for the lower or upper bound. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna move on to geometric random variables. So these are a type of discrete random variables that models the number of trials required to achieve the first success. It's highlighted, it's bolded, the chance to achieve the first success in a series of independent trials with two possible outcomes, success or failure. So very similar to the uh, binomial va random variables. So example of this is you're flipping a coin and you're trying to see the number of flips it required to get the first heads. Um, that is the example of a geometric random variable. Here are a couple criteria. The trials have to be independent. Each trial has to have the same probability of success denoted by P. And the random variable counts the number of trials until the first success occurs, like we talked about before in the definition. Now, easy way to tell geometric random variables from binomial random variables is the following. Binomial random variables have fixed number of trials. Geometrics 
do not have a fixed number of trials. So look out for the keyword until. More calculator abuse and commands, geometric PDF and geometric CDF. Um, so yeah, if there's one thing you learned today is learn how to use calculator commands because it makes your life pretty darn easy. And then for the mean and standard deviation of geometric random variables, we have the mean is just one over the probability, chance of success, and then standard deviation is square root one minus probability of success over probability of success. So that does it for all the content you need to know for unit four, probability, and random variables.